ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಒನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಏಟೀನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಸ ತು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಋಷೇರಂಶೇ ಗತಾಸು ಉರಗಂ ಋಷ ವಿನಿರ್ಗಚ್ಚಂದನುಷ್ಕೋಟ್ಯ ನಿಧಾಯ ಪುರಮಾಗತ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪರ್ಪಟ್ ಬೈ ಇಸ್ಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಎ ಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ವೈ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಸೋ ಇನ್ಸಲ್ಟೆಡ್ ಪಿಕ್ಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಎ ಲೈಫ್ನೆಸ್ ಸ್ನೇಕ್ ವಿತ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಬೌ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಂಗ್ರಿಲಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೇಜ್ ದೆನ್ ಹಿ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾಲೆಸ್ the king thus treated the sage tit for tat although he was never accustomed to such silly actions by the will of the lord the king while going while going away found a dead snake in front of him and he thought that the sage who had coldly received him thus might might be coldly rewarded by being offered a garland of a dead snake in the ordinary course of dealing this was not very unnatural but in the case of maharaj parikshit's dealing with a brahmana sesh this was certainly unprecedented it so happened by the will of the lord thus ends the bhakti vedanta parva so we have seen in the last few verses that when parikshit maharaj entered the ashram of shamika rishi who was deeply meditating who was in complete silence and he was not aware of the externals as to what is happening in the last verse uh, we saw that parikshit maharaj was hungry and thirsty and so he went into the ashram so that he may be received well and he may be offered with water but here we see that the uh, the shamika rishi was in deep meditation was in complete silence and there was no one to receive him it is said according to the law of reception even if an enemy comes to the house he should be received he should be offered a good seat and he should offer him a water just like we see in the case of in the battlefield of kurukshetra when the pandavas and kauravas were fighting like enemies and soon after the sunset they were all one they were all very friendly in one such instance arjuna happened to visit duryodhana and duryodhana considered arjuna as an enemy but when he went to his palace when he meets duryodhana duryodhana welcomes him with all good reception he offers him good seating and in fact he says please tell me what is your desire i shall fulfill all your desire this is a law of reception but here we see in the case of parikshit maharaj who is the emperor of the entire planet there was no one to receive him and this is called cold treatment we also come across people whom we meet they treat coldly is it not sometimes we meet people you know they treat us very coldly they don't give a warm reception no smile on their face no such pleasantries so this is called cold treatment and parikshit when he entered this was his expectation that somebody would receive him he would offer him some water and the sage was in complete meditation in deep meditation 
and he was indifferent to what is happening and therefore this is considered as cold treatment and parikshit was upset it is said in this verse he became angry and in anger he took a, a lifeless snake which was on the ground and garlanded him on his shoulder actually if this stage was not set up we would have not sat here and heard shrimad bhagavatam eventually we will see that the parikshit was cursed by a brahmana boy that he would die in 7 days and parikshit after he, after hearing the curse he could have contracted but he did not and then he gave up his kingdom goes to sukadev goswami hears the bhagavatam that's why we are all sitting here and hearing shrimad bhagavatam because the act of parikshit was the will of the lord prabhu pa says in today's purport it happened so because of the will of the lord now after hearing so much of philosophy in krishna conscious we know that every living entity has free will is it not every living entity has a free will and using this free will we may use or misuse our free will and this misuse of free will is leading us to different destinations of life sometimes as human beings sometimes as animals sometimes as reptiles birds etc it is very crucial that how we use this free will now in the case of parikshit he acted according to the will of the lord acted according to the will of the lord what does it mean will of the lord what what does it mean it is actually lord's desire his will was controlled by the lord the pure devotees act according to the will of the lord according to the desire of the lord according to the mission of the lord whereas our free will this free will we are free we freely act according to our whims according to our whims according to our desires what pleases us we act and that's why we are taking life birth after birth birth after birth birth after birth in the wheel of material nature but here parikshit acted according to the will of the lord his expectation was not fulfilled when he entered the ashram of the sage and therefore he becomes angry in this context even krishna also says in the bhagavad gita that how one can become angry what leads one to become angry he says in the bhagavad gita dhyayato vishayan pumsaha when one is contemplating on something material ha huh? sanga teshu pu teshu pu jayate he becomes attached to it he wants to fulfill his desire sangat sanjayate khama when his desire is not fulfilled immediately there is anger khama krodo bi jayate immediately there is anger in this context on the occasion of sudarshan jayanti a similar instance is been described in shrimad bhagavatam how if one's desire is not fulfilled he becomes angry once what happened was it is given in shrimad bhagavatam 9th canto amrish maharaj 
he was a great devotee of lord krishna he was blessed with all opulence unlimited opulence and he was the king of the entire planet he had good name fame position and everything was under his control everything was under his control but he was not attached to anything material to any of this opulence he was not attached in fact he compared this opulence to an insignificant piece of a stone it is said vasudeve bhagavati tad bhakteshu cha sadushu prapto bhavam param vishvam enidam lostravat smutham amrish maharaj a great devotee of lord vasudeva engaged in the service of the devotees of the lord tad bhakteshu cha sadushu and he compared this vishwam prapto bhavam param vishwam he compared this entire universe entire vishwam enidam lostravat smritham he compared to an inauspicious insignificant piece of a stone in other words although he was ruling the entire universe entire planet he was not at all attached he was completely detached to all his opulences imagine if we get that opportunity of material opulence lot of wealth name fame position what will happen to us what will happen to us if we get all these opulences hmm? we become attached to it we become attached to it and because of which we will not be able to remember the lord we will not be able to remember krishna because of opulence we become pride we become immersed in sense gratification i remember when i was traveling to hyderabad there was a co passenger he was telling that he used to visit temples every day and praying to the lord that he be blessed with good wealth good family children position he was praying for it and when he was blessed with all opulence all wealth good business good family he was completely absorbed in it and he was not visiting temple he was not thanking the lord i asked him why are you not going to the temple now he said no time no time he was completely attached he was immersed in sense gratification that's why krishna says in the bhagavad gita bhogaishwarya prasaktana anyone who is attached to bhoga and aishwarya what happens taya pratat chetasam vyavasayatmika vyavasayatmika buddhihi samadau na vidiyate the determination to worship the lord to please the lord does not take place because he is completely absorbed in sense gratification whereas the devotee is feel the opulence is an obstacle because it tends to forget the lord it makes us forget the lord the opulence makes us forget the lord just like we see in the case of sudhama was a poor brahmana he was in poverty stricken but he was always remembering the lord in all circumstances he was remembering the lord even the pandavas who were the rightful owners owners of the property but they were deprived of their own property prosperity they were completely deprived but still they were remembering the lord in all circumstances they had so many difficulties so many challenges 
but still they were remembering the lord they became exalted devotees of lord krishna so although amrish maharaj had all these opulences he never forgot the lord he was always engaging in in sense his senses in the service of the lord he was completely absorbed in the service of the lord 24 hours he was remembering the lord now one may question how is it possible to remember the lord always 24 hours always engaging our senses in the service of the lord 24 hours how is it possible he is an example of amrish maharaj how he remembered the lord always it is said he engaged himself his mind always in meditating upon the lord upon the lotus feet of the lord he engaged his mind in meditation upon the lotus feet of the lord his words in describing the glories of the lord his hands in cleansing the temple of the lord his ears in hearing the glories of the lord spoken by the devotees his eyes in seeing the beauty of the lord his senses is engaged his sense of touch in touching the bodies of pure devotees he engaged his sense of smell in smelling the fragrance of the tulsi leaves offered to the lord his tongue in tasting krishna prasadam this we don't forget and his legs in walking to the holy places of the lord his head in bowing before the lord like this he engaged his senses in the service of the lord 24 hours all his desires he engaged in the service of the lord it is said indeed amrish maharaj never desired sense gratification he was completely absorbed in the service of the lord 24 hours in this way he became increasingly attached to the service of the lord increasingly attached that is why krishna also says in the bhagavad gita mai asakta manaha partha yogam yunjun madha shraya asamshayam samagram mam yatha gnashasi tat shrunu mai asakta manaha partha mai asakta manaha he was completely attached to me he was completely attached and what does he do yogam yunjun madashraya he was working in conscious of me always in conscious of me always in thinking of me by doing so what happened asamshayam samagram ma asamshayam without a doubt completely one can understand about krishna asamshayam without a doubt one can understand about krishna and for us to practice like this whatever amrish maharaj was engaging in the service of the lord it is recommended that we follow the spiritual masters instructions if we have to practice like amrish maharaj and like this amrish maharaj 24 hours he engaged himself in the service of the lord and therefore he was completely detached to all material opulences and he was governing the entire universe in this way and performing various uh, rituals various sacrifices in order to please the lord so when he was doing all these things once it so happened amrish maharaj along with his queen observed a vow of ekadashi and dwadashi vrata for one complete year they observed the vow of ekadashi and dwadashi vrata for one complete year 
By the way, why is it required to observe Ekadasi Varta? What does Prabhupada say? What does Prabhupada say if one observes Ekadasi Vratha? He says, if we observe Ekadasi, uh, Ekadasi Vratha, it pleases the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Anyone who wants to advance in Krishna Conscious, he must perform Ekadasi Vratha regularly. So, he was performing the Vratha after one complete year in the month of Kartika, he wants to break the vow. And before breaking the vow, he takes bath in the Yamuna river and he worships the Supreme Lord Hari. He performs various rituals, various paraphernalia he offers to Lord Hari and he pleases the Lord. And he invites all the brahmanas to his palace and he gives in charity to all the brahmanas present there, he gives 60 crores of cows. 60 crores of cows he gives to the, he gives as charity to the brahmanas. And each cow had horns and these horns were covered with gold plate. You see the opulence? Not only the horns, even the hooves were covered with silver plate. He offered all the 60 crores of cows to the brahmanas. And then he fed them sumptuously with palatable dishes. And he satisfied all the brahmanas present there. And with their permission, he wants to break the fast. Exactly at this time, Durvasamuni appears. Durvasamuni, who is a great mystic, mystic yogi, he appears in the scene. And Amrish Maharaj receives him respectfully. He offers him a seat. He washes his feet. He worships him. And he also offers him the food. And Durvasamuni gladly accepts all the offering. Before that, at that time it was noon, he wants to perform noon ritualistic ceremonies. And then he goes to river Emuna. He takes bath. When he goes to river Emuna, meanwhile, there was only one last muhurta for Amrish Maharaj to break the fast. Now, Amrish Maharaj was in a confusion. Now, Durvasamuni has come to the palace. We have to feed him. And I cannot break the fast. Now, what to do in this situation? He was in a confused state. In this confused state, he approaches the Brahmanas. What to do in this situation? If we don't break the fast, it is said there is a flaw in one's observance of the vow. If we break the fast, he felt that he may be transgressing the law of religion. Therefore, he was in a confused state, whether to break fast or not break the fast. And he approached the brahmanas. And the brahmanas gives him an opinion that if he, if he drinks water, it is as good as breaking the fast and not breaking the fast. And it is not transgressing the law of religion. It is not inauspicious to do that. So, the Brahmanas advised him to break the fast by drinking water. And with their permission, Amrish Maharaj drank water, remembering and meditating the Supreme Lord Vishnu. And Durvasamani, he finishes his noon ritualistic activities. He comes back to the palace. And Amrish Maharaj again receives him very well. 
with all the respects and he offers him good seating and because of his mystic power he could understand that amrish maharaj drank water although he has invited me without feeding me he first has eaten and he becomes very angry he becomes very angry and he said alas just see the behavior of this cruel man just see the behavior of this cruel man he feels that is a devotee of vishnu but is actually not devotee of vishnu he has a, he has so much of pride because of his material opulence name fame he has so much of pride before feeding me he has eaten first you have transgressed the laws of religion he becomes very angry and now he wants to punish him he wants to punish him actually durvasa muni was envious of amrish maharaj because of his name fame and opulence he was envious of him and prabhupa says a devotee cannot be defeated by so called mystic yogi a devotee cannot be defeated by so called mystic yogi because he possesses all good qualities of the lord he possesses all good qualities of the lord it is said in the bhagavatam yashyasti bhaktir bhagavati akinchana sarvair gunes tatra samasate suraha anyone who is worshiping the supreme lord vishnu he possesses all good qualities of devata sarvair gunair all gunas of devatas on the other hand harava abaktasya the non devotees kuto mahat guna manoratena sati dhavato bahi the non devotees possess no good qualities but they are driven by mental speculation they are driven by mental speculation and that's why prabhu pas says that devotees cannot be defeated and durvas muni becomes red his face becomes red with anger he took a bunch of hair from his head and creates a demon from it and this demon was blazing fire of devastation he was resembling like a blazing fire of devastation who could destroy the entire universe and he comes before the king and the king was undisturbed he did not move an inch from his position he was not at all afraid nor he was praying for the lord for protection he was not at all afraid even prahlad his father harassed him tortured him put him in the midst of snakes put him in the midst of elephants put him in the fire of you know uh, burning oil boiling oil he was not at all afraid he was just remembering the lord imagine if such creature comes before us what would happen to the entire hall everybody would run away is it not but amrish maharaj was undisturbed because it is said the devotees are narayana paraha the devotees are narayana paraha sarve nakutaschana bibeti they were they are never afraid of any material danger any dangers they are never afraid because they are always constantly remembering the lord tolerating all you know intolerances all dangers 
this instance is a learning for all the devotees that when such intolerable awkward situations we encounter it is very important that we remember the lord we get in touch with the lord we think about the lord we chant the glories of the lord we chant the holy names of the lord in order to overcome all these circumstances krishna also says in the bhagavad gita mat chitta sarva durgani just by remembering me one can overcome all the impediments by his grace tat parashada tharishyasi ata chetvam ahankaran nashroshasi navinankshasi if one remembers him he can cross over all the obstacles but on the other hand if one acts due to false ego he will be lost he will be lost and that's why always the devotees remember the lord as the demon came near to the king sudarshana chakra appears and sudarshana chakra burned the demon to ashes burned the demon to ashes and amrish maharaj was undisturbed he was just remembering the lord he was meditating on the lord because krishna says in the bhagavad gita kaunteya pratijanihi name bhakta pranashyati krishna always protects the devotees if anyone does a little service a little devotion service krishna is always there to protect his devotees aham tvam sarva papebhyo mokshe sam ma suchah do not fear krishna is always there to protect his devotees even if some someone does a little devotional service swalpam api asya dharmasya trayate mahato bhaya a little swalpa and krishna is eager to protect his devotees he is very kind so that the devotee may progress in krishna conscious he is always there to protect his devotees so now after killing the demon now sudarshana chakra turns towards durvasamuni and durvasamuni becomes frightened he runs away from that place and sudarshana chakra is also chasing him he saw that sudarshana chakra was almost touching him and he began to run away swiftly to different planets to different caves to different oceans to different places in entire three three planet three worlds he was running everywhere look and corner of the planet of the universe he could not get shelter anywhere and sudarshan chakra the blazing fire is chasing him and finally he could not get shelter anywhere he he approaches brahma he approaches brahma and he prays to brahma oh my dear lord oh brahma kindly protect me from this blazing fire of sudarshana chakra sent by the supreme lord vishnu kindly protect me kindly save me and brahma said to him you have offended a great devotee how can i save him i am also under his shelter i have also surrendered to the supreme lord as a obedient servant of the supreme lord how can i disobey the order of the lord you have offended a great devotee so then he refuses to protect him and now he goes to lord shiva who is in kailash he approaches lord shiva and lord shiva also refuses to protect him he also said him you offended a great devotee 
you offended a great devotee. But he advises him, if you want peace from Sudarshana Chakra, you must approach Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu can bestow favor upon you. And then Durvasamani goes to Vaikuntha Dham. You see the power of Durvasamani is traveling the entire universe. All three planet system is going beyond material universes to Vaikuntha Loka. But still he was chased. He was not at peace, although he has so much of power. And now, Durvasmani goes to Vaikuntha Dham. He falls at the feet of Lord Narayana, who is residing with his concert. And he prays to Lord Narayana, Oh my Lord, O oh unlimited Lord, O oh infallible Lord, I have committed a great offense. Kindly protect me. Kindly give me protection. Without knowledge, I have offended a great devotee. Kindly save me from this reaction of offense. He is praying to Lord Narayana. And the Lord, Supreme Lord, He says to the Brahmana, O Brahmana, I am completely under the control of my devotees. I am not at all independent. I am under their control. What to speak of my devotees? Even the devotees of my devotees are very dear. Are very dear to me. I am under their control. I am not independent. Why is it so? Why is it so that Lord is under the control of devotees? It is said that devotees are Anya Bilashita Shunya. They don't have any material desire. Their only desire is to please the Lord. They do, their only desire is to serve the Lord. Their only desire is to serve more and more to the Lord. They want to please the Lord. They don't have any other desire. That's why Prabhupada gives an example in this context. Just like a chaste woman who has a faithful husband wants to serve him, is always thinking of the welfare of the husband. And husband is also thinking about how we can give protection to the wife because he is so much devoted to husband. And it is the husband's responsibility to protect the wife. In the same way, the Supreme Lord, who is always thinking, the devotees are always thinking about the Supreme Lord and the Supreme Lord is always want to protect his devotees. Because they always want to serve him. They always want to please him. This is the transcendental qualification of a devotee. And the Lord becomes extremely favorable to the devotees. Because they have given up everything for the Lord. They have given up their home, their family, their opulence, their wealth. They have given up everything just to serve the Lord. And the Lord says, how can I give up them? Who are always thinking of me. How can I give them up? It's like we see. Mother Ashoda is controlling Lord Krishna. He is punishing Lord Krishna. He is chasing Lord Krishna. She is doing all this only out of love for the Lord. Out of love for the Lord. And now we see here, the devotees have given up everything for the Lord. How can the Lord give up such devotees? Even if somebody is attached to, you know, uh, wealth, family, children, everyone, even if somebody is attached, and if the devotee wants to serve the Lord sincerely, the Lord makes an arrangement so that he becomes detached. 
and he can devote himself to me he can himself devote to lord krishna and go back home back to god and how can i give up such devotee and then bhagavatam also says that offending a devotee is more dangerous than offending a lord vishnu himself lord vishnu may forgive the offense he may nullify the offense but lord vishnu will not tolerate the offense to a devotee that is why when we chant the holy name when we chant the holy name of lord krishna there are 10 offenses the very first offense is the most serious offense to blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their life for propagating the holy name of the lord is the most serious offense and that's why the lord advised to him advised to the brahmana o brahmana let me give you advice for your own benefit for your own protection he said to him by offending maharaj amrisha you have acted with envy you have acted with envy therefore if you want protection you must immediately go to him and ask forgiveness you must satisfy amrish maharaj and then only there will be peace for you only then there will be peace for you he had the supreme lord himself advised amrish maharaj durvasamuni and durvasamuni understood how serious his mistake was and he went to amrish maharaj he fell at his feet and he sought forgiveness and amrish maharaj felt ashamed we were very respectable brahmana and being so humble he felt very much ashamed he was so humble and durvasamuni he sought forgiveness and is asking protection from this blazing fire of sudarshana chakra please save me from this blazing fire i am unable to tolerate please save me and amrish maharaj offers humbly prayers to sudarshana he offers beautiful prayers on this occasion of sudarshan jayanti there are very few verses in the shrimad bhagavatam when you find time you may offer these beautiful prayers we shall see one or two verses uh, offered by amrish maharaj to the sudarshana chakra he offers prayers he says sudarshana namastubhyam what is the meaning of sudarshana so means auspicious and darshana means vision auspicious vision sudarshana is auspicious to the devotees and inauspicious to the demons and he says Sudarshana Namastubhyam Sahasra Chuta Priya Sarvatra Ghatin Vipraya Swasti Bhuya Vid Idas Pathe O Sudarshana, I offer my respectable obeisances. Who possess Sahasra? He has thousands of spokes in his wheel. He has thousands of spokes. And he is the most dear to Achuta, Achuta Priya. is most dear to achuta priya sarvatra gatin vipraya he says o destroyer all o destroyer of all weapons o original vision of the personality of godhead kindly give shelter and auspicious to this brahmana you see the brahmana offended him and he is praying for his favor he is praying for his auspicious you see the quality of a devotee that's why bhagavatam says he possesses all good qualities of devatas he is paying for his auspiciousness kindly give shelter to this poor brahmana and next in the verse in the next prayer he prays vedehi badram tad anugraha 
kindly favor this poor brahmana this will certainly favors favor all of us you see he is praying for his favor and when the king offered prayers to the sudarshana chakra the sudarshana chakra became peaceful and durvasamani became satisfied when he sought forgiveness and when durvasamani offered prayers to sudarshana chakra he became peaceful he became satisfied and durvasamani he praised the qualities of amrish maharaj he says that o king today i have experienced the greatness of devotees of the supreme lord for although i have committed an offense you have prayed for my good fortune you see overlooking my offenses you have saved my life therefore i am obliged to you i am obliged to you actually when durvasamuni uh, uh, was going all around the planet was chased by sudarshan chakra he was going all over the planet for one year sudarshan chakra chased him for one year and amrish maharaj he was waiting for the return of durvasamani he did not take his food unless he feed the brahmana he didn't want to take his food but then how was he maintaining he was just drinking water for one entire year he was just maintaining himself sustaining himself just by drinking water and he was waiting for the return of the brahmana when this all incident has happened when the brahmana was pacified when he became peaceful and then amrish maharaj fed him sumptuously with all varieties of palatable dishes he fed him sumptuously and then brahmana was satisfied and he said to the amrish maharaj he requested him you also please take your meal you also please take your meal that's how amrish maharaj you see the quality the great quality he was tolerating all inconveniences he was waiting for the brahmana this is a quality of devotees all austerity he was respectfully waiting for the brahmana it is said in the end of this past time it is said anyone who hears this past time the falastuti it is said iti etat punyam akhyanam amrishasya bhupate sankirtayan anudayan bhakto bhagavato bhavet anyone who hears this narration anyone who chants this narration anyone who thinks about this past time anyone who glorifies about this past time it is said certainly he become he will become a pure devotee of the law he will become a pure devotee of the law and in this context shila vishwana chakravarti thakura he gives an example just like a person who wants to earn money who wants to become a millionaire a multi millionaire he wants to earn more and more money even after earning more and more money he is not satisfied he wants to earn more and more money this should be the mentality of a devotee he wants to offer more and more service to the lord he is not satisfied he wants to please the lord more and more he wants to serve the lord more and more this should be the mentality of a devotee and he says the mentality of engaging more and more in devotional service puts one in the most exalted position you see the kind of uh, scriptures that is offering to us he will be situated in the most exalted position whereas the person 
who is engaged in earning more and more money he becomes bonded in this world he becomes entangled in this world whereas the devotee becomes liberated whereas the devotee becomes liberated such is the glorious pastime of the supreme lord and his devotees so today on this auspicious occasion of sudarshana jayanti we shall remember his pastime we shall chant the prayers of lord um, uh, maharaj amrisha to sudarshana whenever there is a time available and in the beginning we discussed about the free will is it not we discussed about the free will when we use this free will in the service of the lord we should free ourselves from the wheel of material nature of taking birth after birth and taking the shelter of the wheel of sudarshana we should seek the shelter of the wheel of sudarshana chakra how do we seek the shelter of sudarshana by chanting the holy names of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare shla prabhu pad ki jai shrimad bhagavatam ki jai sudarshana ki jai sudarshan jayanti ki jai ithai gaur prema